Congratulations! Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. From a cat in a hat to a fox in socks, there's nothing this genius could not concoct. You sit there and watch me. I'll prove it by test. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 books by Dr. Seuss. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Now, uh, uh, who'd you say you were, little fella? Mister, I am the Lorax. For this list, we're taking a look at the books that proved time after time that this author was a master of storytelling, drawing, rhythm, and rhyme. By the way, a rhyme warning is in order. Grind on for miles across weirdish wild space, headed, I fear, for the most useless place. Number 10, Dr. Seuss's ABC. Here's the perfect picture book to learn how to read, with smart poems, nice artwork, and new vocab words guaranteed. From Aunt Annie's Alligator to Zizzer Zazzer Zuz, Alphabetic Adventure is clearly a buzz. It's an educational book that sticks with kids for sure, and its fundamental lessons are bound to endure. What begins with T? Ten tired turtles on a tuttle tuttle tree. Its premise is basic, and youngsters learn tons, while happily having oodles of fun. Do you like to read? Then reading you'll do. You'll learn words like David Donald Do, Quacking Quackaroo, and Kangaroo too. And you'll swiftly surpass reading level two. Willie Waterloo washes Warren Wiggins, who is washing Waldo Woo. Number nine, The 500 Hats of Bartholomew Cubbins. Now high on the top of a mountain stood the palace of King Derwin, who liked to look down over the houses of his subjects. Seuss's second kid's book lacks his trademark rhymes and colors, but it's a must-read for all small first-grade scholars. The pictures are mainly in white and in black, but make some great use of a standout red hat. It marks the debut of Bartholomew Cubbins, a boy who has hats on his head by the dozens. As fast as he would snatch one hat off, Another would appear. And another. There's more to this boy and his hats than you'd think. They drive the strong king really mad to the brink. All right. Go tell the executioner to chop your head off. With a timeless great story and hats, hats galore, it feels like it comes straight out of folklore. And so ends the story of the 500 hats. No one in the kingdom of Did could ever explain how the strange thing had happened. Number eight. Yertle the Turtle and Other Stories. I'm Yertle the Turtle, oh marvelous me, for I am the ruler of all that I see. While Gertrude McFuzz and Big Bragg are great stories, Yertle the Turtle takes all of the glory. I'm king of a cow, and I'm king of a mule. I'm king of a house, and a bush, and a cat. The king is a turtle who spends his time stacking, his subjects below him, his king skills are lacking. With simple, smart themes, it's a straightforward story, but it also contains a mature allegory. It could really show Hitler's rise and his fall, pleading for some equal freedom for all. And today, the great Yertle, that marvelous he, is king of the mud. That is all he can see. The subject sounds heavy for young ones to bear, but its morals and characters please every creature everywhere. Number seven, oh, the places you'll go. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. If you're lacking a purpose, a point, a direction, gaze at this book and see your reflection. Oh, the places you'll go plots the long road ahead, showing high times and low times from point A to point Z. Oh, the places you'll go. Wherever you fly, you'll be best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest. Even when faced with an uncertain fate, you can still make the most of what's piled on your plate. Or if numerous obstacles get in your way, you can still make the most of your life every day. And when you're alone, there's a very good chance that you'll meet things that scare you right out of your pants. Yeah. It's fitting this tale would be Seuss's swan song, as it tells of life's journey at once short and yet long. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 
98 and three quarters percent guaranteed. Kid, you'll move mountains. Number six, Horton hears a who. He was splashing, enjoying the jungle's great joys, when Horton the elephant heard a small noise. This sweet, thoughtful elephant first did appear in Horton Hatches the Egg, but we love him most here. And if you are ready for book number two, pick up a copy of Horton Hears a Who. Just Horton's ears hear the Who's yells and cries, encouraging readers to look out for little guys. Because after all, a, a person's a person, no matter how small. Let's take heed of this tale and never ignore those in need of our help. We must rise up and roar. That one small extra yap put it over, and all the Who noises burst out of the clover. I, I hear he it, did what? Some may not believe you and will show resistance, but Horton proves the smallest voices can make a difference. What are we gonna do without you, Horton? Ah, uh, don't worry. I'll always be around. And even as I wander, I'm keeping you in sight. You're a candle in the window on a cold, dark winter's night. Beautiful metaphor. Number five, the Lorax. What you doing in my tree stump, buddy? Your tree stump? Your tree stump? Mister, I am the Lorax. I speak for the... Forget it. <laughs> I don't really need the stump. The personal fave of the doctor himself is a tale of a boy and an earth-minded elf. A teachable tale of respecting our earth, the Lorax asks questions on capitalism's true worth. I speak for men and human opportunities. For your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering, <laughs> and biggering, and biggering, and biggering. The careless old Wunzler chops down all the trees and shows us how all can be taken by greed. I speak for the trees, and I'll yell and I'll shout for the fine things on Earth that are on their way out. If the Lorax's words go completely unheeded, sadly, we'd lose all the trees our Earth needed. What happens when simple things get out of hand? And the fish and his family's on hard dry land. Some argue that Seuss preached right straight to the choir, but his words and his message we should truly admire. With an ending ambiguous and creatures complex, the Lorax says much more than you would expect. You done good, Beanpole. You done good. Number four, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Some are red and some are blue. Some are old and some are new. While this colorful book is a bit light on plot, it's a classic and kids will reread it a lot. Oh me, oh my, oh me, oh my, what a lot of funny things go by. A book teachers love and share with their small students. A quick thumb through this one is never imprudent. Filled with strange different beings that two children meet, one has lots of fingers and another six feet. Mr. Gump has a seven hump wump, so if you like to go bump bump. These key building blocks help kids tell red from blue, and old from new, and one from two. Inspiration is drawn from this book's silly rhymes. Many lessons are learned, one by one, in due time. Today is gone. Today was fun. Tomorrow is another one. Every day, from here to there, funny things are everywhere. Number three, how the Grinch stole Christmas. Every who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. Now this story draws us back in every year. Our annual dosage of warm Christmas cheer. Every who down in Whoville likes Christmas a lot, but one cranky, grumpy, mean green dude does not. I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. His plot to serve Christmas its one fatal bludgeon makes this Grinch our most favorite Christmas curmudgeon. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room and he took every present. Stealing presents and stockings and the yummy roast beast, he desperately tries to make whose great joy cease. This green anti-hero learns his lesson, however, 
Much like this great book, Christmas spirit lasts forever. He brought everything back, all the food for the feast. And he, he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. Number two, green eggs and ham. Do you like green eggs and ham? I do not like them, Sam I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. This challenge might seem just a bit too absurd. Write a book using only just 50 different words. Not 500, not 5,000, just 50, it's true. But if anyone could do it, Dr. Seuss, it could do. Could you? Would you? On a train? No, not on a train, not in a tree, not in a car, Sam, let me be! By accepting this dare, Seuss was in quite a jam. He won the bet, though, writing green eggs and ham. Would you eat them in a box? Would you eat them with a fox? Dr. Seuss makes the most of his tiny word choice, with fun characters, food, and a lively, great voice. When faced with new things, you may run, you may cry. But Sam I Am hopes you give green eggs a try. I like green eggs and ham. I do. I like them, Sam I Am. And I would eat them in a boat. And I would eat them with a goat. And I will eat them in the rain and in the dark and on a train. Before number one gets our unsplit attention, here are a few other honorable mentions. Number one, the cat in the hat. Look, a cat in a hat. You will note I am neat. Wiped my feet on the mat. With a super tall hat striped in white and bright red, this mischievous cat pops right into our heads. In English, cat, hat, in French, shot chapeau. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq. Here we go. A Dr. Seuss creature that's tricky and fun. He's top of our list at place number one. Where most kids are trained to obey all the rules, this feline taught lessons outside of a school. It isn't here, I'll mark this X. It isn't there, I'll mark that Y. It isn't underneath the apple, mark the apple HKI. He taught of rebellion, of cool games, not decorum. He taught us that rain was no reason for boredom. Shaping childhoods and minds and the book scene forever, reading Cat in the Hat is always a pleasure. Penned by a man named of Theodore Geisel, a man whose great vision could never be stifled. No one can rhyme just as well as the master, because when we do try, it's a brutal disaster. Hello, I was just, uh, I really should be going. <laughs> How'd they get so small? Do you agree with our list? Hey, look, I don't want any trouble. Are there any beloved Dr. Seuss books that we missed? In my world, everyone's a pony, and they all eat rainbows and poop butterflies. For more Wubbleist Top 10s published all day long, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way.